we did like Yo, that day, shit. But, and that shit was hard. Bro. That shit was hard as fuck. That's the time we met. The first time was over by uh, by uh, the smoke, smoke shop. shop. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. That's what it was. Welcome to the journey. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Courtney Elijah Campbell, owner of uh, Almighty Skate Shop. My name is Adrian, but I go by Dad C. You feel me? Artist, producer, designer, extraordinaire. You feel me? Um, I'm a designer. So, a designer and I also run a store. Um, I'm in the clothes, music, art. The fly shit. Fly shit, yeah. Yeah. Basically. You. you wanna go first, Corey? You want me to go first? Uh, I'm 36. I'm 27, about to be 28. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm 25, just, oh, just oh. since we're telling our ages. On the 27th, I'm about to be 28. Matter of oh, fact, really? it's November, yeah. I'm Same day as Bruce Lee and Jimi Hendrix. Hey. Yes, sir. Yes. I was born in Riverside, California. Riverside? In Inglewood, California. Precisely. <laughs> you have some stories for me, bro. You <laughs> <laughs> hey. have some stories for me, and I'm so, you so, so, so. All right, so my mom, keep, all right, so where I lived at on 139 like, highs, like, it was dangerous, like, motherfucker. My mom was like, you can't go outside. I didn't even go to school over there. I had to, like, catch a bus somewhere. And go, I went to school, like, towards, like, Santa Monica and shit, like, in Marina Del Rey area and shit, like, elementary school, middle school. So, I, I had friends on the block and I would kick with the motherfuckers, but I couldn't really kick it with the motherfuckers type shit. Like, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you better be inside that house. You don't be kicking it outside. Y'all not playing around front. And I gotta know their mama type. Like, my mama's on some. I gotta have their mama number. And I don't know their daddy. I gotta be able to go, all of that. So. I grew up outside of LA, kind of suburbs, but I grew up with everything. Like, I didn't. We grew up with, like, every color, every kind of person. Whether they hooped, whether they played football, skated, rapped, a lot of hustlers, you know what I mean? It's like... Yeah, it's I, popping out there too. Yeah, no, it's definitely right. popping out there. And, you know, here here and there I would get into my little shit. But I, I stayed in sports a lot, so that kept me away from a lot of shit that I would have been into until I got older. Yeah. I had one of them moments, my boy. I had that moment. Yeah? Yeah, bro. And I, right. I was probably like... What is it? I can't remember exactly what age, but it was when Kanye West was dropping a graduation. That's like oh nine, maybe two thousand ten. Yeah, bro, and he and he like I was so Fifty Cent, like you know, because Fifty Cent was like my favorite rapper at the yeah. time, and I was really on some yeah. like street shit. But I was also heavy in the Kanye, like you know, and on some fly shit. But when that happened, I was like, man, so you don't have to be a gang member, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know, like you could, you could just be a fly ass cool motherfucker, bro. And that's when I really like stepped into being me as in who I am. So it's like, all right, for sure. That was that moment. Yeah, I remember being like a little kid with my family. You know what I mean? I don't know the moment when I was like. But what, what's the what's the most fun memory you can remember of that time? The earliest like, time growing up. Um, playing basketball in a little hoop that I had at the house with me and my brother. Like spending time with like my brother and my family. That's dope. Yeah. My earliest memory. Uh, honestly, it's crazy because I had, I keep having like dreams about not recently, but I had a couple of dreams about this shit. I had to like talk to my mom about it. I always had this dream where it's like I was with like my mom and my dad, but my mom was chopping it up with Ice Cube. Yo, my dad. Yo. Ice Cube. I used to always think it was Ice Cube. When I was Yo, hey, kid, you not? And I brought it up to my mom, and she was like, "Oh yeah, oh shit, yeah, that was yeah, you, that really happened." Because she, cause she really, cause, cause she really knew the motherfuckers, like you know, because she really is from, from she's she from Chicago, but she been in the city like she's from a young ass age, so she really knew I was saying the motherfuckers who was literally in front of this nigga's mom's house, 
And I'm, I had the whole visual, like the little, little triangle shaped trees in oh, the peak oh, house. But that shit was a reoccurring dream. I told my mom, she was like, yeah, that shit really happened. You was like two years old. <laughs> Remember that shit. That's crazy. I remember my dad lived in Santa Monica. Um, that's like I would come out there to visit him. And uh, back at that time, um, Chronic 2000, or Chronic, the Chronic the first Chronic. one was high. And I, for some reason, I remember someone tried to break into his car and they went down there with the bus. <laughs> the first thing I remember of my dad. It's crazy. <laughs> they, they broke into his shit and the alarm was going off. And I think he was like just coming home from the club and he like walked up on him. All right, caught him. And caught him. Caught him. <laughs> Wrong moment. Yeah. But, like, I just remember being a kid rolling around listening to Dr. Dre the Chronic at, like, six years old. Yeah, Mighty. Oh, my. Yeah, yeah. What's the part? Talk to talk. Oh, Mighty uh, Skate Mighty's Shop. Mighty's a skate shop that was put in downtown at the time. There wasn't nothing down here that was basically providing this type of service to the, to the community. The vibe. And yeah, the vibe, like, the style. Like, there was no skate shops, really. You had to go to uh, Little Tokyo. Mm -hmm. Like downtown, there was nothing, and then you know we just came with some style and brought it into the community and been doing our thing ever since. And man, um, so I grew up, you know, Southern California. We pretty much all have the same style, no matter really where you're from. So I grew up in like Dickies and Levi's and white tees, and then like the Pharrell era came through, and that kind of changed everything. Where we was mm -hmm. like, where we were, they were wearing stuff that we wanted to wear, but the way we wore our clothes, it didn't equate. So we had to change it to smaller shit that, you know, look right. And I feel like Pharrell, with his complete opposite style of what was in at that time, is the reason the world it is today in any type of fashion sense. Even before Kanye, because Kanye's was still baggy. Kanye's was still where Pharrell was wearing, like, real fitted shit from the jump, trucker hats from the jump, like, shit that you wouldn't expect in, in hip-hop music. And, um, and then him and then to Nigo, you know, Nigo with the being a, you know, not even, I'm not gonna say Nigo, there's an owner called, uh, named Jonas, he owned LRG. And he was like, at the time for me, like the dopest dude, because he, he was like, he was a walking style that everybody was trying to have, you know what I mean, so. Okay, he was like the Dapper Dan of LA. Oh, um, yeah, I, I, you could say that. I honestly just wanted to be comfortable like, I just be getting shit that's, like, comfortable, and then, like, colors, like, coordination of colors. Like, that's pretty much... Comfort is Yeah, nice, I didn't give a right fuck right. about clothes at first, like, for a long time in my life, so I turned probably, like, 15. And I was like, oh, yeah, I gotta get fly for real. And I gotta take care of my clothes. Because I always had nice clothes, but I'll fuck them up, like, really, like... My mom be pissed, like, well, I spent all this money on these damn shoes, you know, ran, it's only been a week. I'm like, yeah. goddamn Jordans. I'm like, I didn't even ask for Jordans. I wanted some Vans. <laughs> Yeah, when I was seven, yeah, like, <laughs> nah, that's all I had growing up is Vans. My mom was like a single mom, so she would go to the Vans out there and get Vans for like 15, 20 bucks and shit like that. Vans is pretty synonymous with skating. So. In California, bro, especially out here. That's what uh, I want. How did you guys get into skating? I want to go back, though. When I was in uh, middle school, I just remember this. There was this dude that moved to my school from uh, Brooklyn. And at that time, like, I... I didn't know a lot about brands, shoes, nothing like that. Like I would, I would wear basketball shoes, whatever basketball player was out with my mom. Like, but he came with some uptowns for the first time I seen him mm -hmm. in my life in person, and that shit just like blew my mind. You know? I asked him what they was. He was like uptown, so I'm like asking everybody what uptowns are. We don't call them that in California. We call them Air Forces. So none of the stores knew what I was talking about. <laughs> Finally, one day, walked into a Foot Locker that had him, and that that was like everybody. He had the he had that New York style that kind of like. I've been interested in and like motivated by it my whole life. I mean, when I was growing up, everybody skated. So we was either riding bikes or we were skateboarding, and then yeah. like 10 of us, 15 of us. I always rode bikes. I was too big to be on skateboards, and I didn't want to get hurt. I'm mean, you know, honest. But all my friends, me and my best friend growing up, playing ball, um, we played baseball, basketball together. He always skated, him and his older brothers. So when we would be kicking it, everybody would be skating. And, that's when I first started watching skate videos and just knowing about it. And then I really got into it, like I said, with TK, Ice Cream, Pharrell, all of that mm -hmm. shit. Diamond Supply Co. was like, changed the game for me. So, you know, it's been different times, but skateboarding's always been something that I've been around. Okay. For me, it's like, all right, so on my block, I had a friend and this motherfucker, I guess who, him and his older brother already been like skating or whatever, but 
they had new Stevie Williams. I guess he lived somewhere else in the neighborhood. And that's before I even knew anything about fucking skating. And I guess they gave him like a couple of skateboards and that motherfucker had gave me a skateboard. And I like it was a Baker skateboard. Like it when like the OGs just the black and white Baker with the little stamp shit. And I was like the first board I had and I just started skating with them motherfuckers and I just never like put it down until I got older. Like nah I ain't really trying to do all like get hurt. But you know, to get around every now and then that shit's still cool, like your exercise, but that shit too dangerous. It's like you know. Robin Big growing up watching yeah. like, like, what? Like I love skateboarding a lot just because of that shot. Like, fucking Tony Hawk American Wasteland. Yeah, and, uh, then we go back to the video games, you know, growing up playing fucking all the pro all the uh, skateboard games. Like, yeah. Tony Hawk Pro Skater, like it was a, a thrasher game at one point that was out. And motherfuckers were skating spots in LA that motherfuckers already knew as like children, so it's like bruh, we're naturally gonna get into That's, skating. I was like we love Muska. Based off that video game, like, it's bored, everything, like, that, that, that game was fire. That's kind of the tough one, because kind of every day I get, like, a proud of, like, you know, I'd be like, you know what, I, I made it. <laughs> I'm like, you know what, hey, it's a lot of people that, that didn't, like, you know, a lot of motherfuckers I know that see the locked up are, like, you know, buried, so it's like, every day is like, all right, for sure, it's another opportunity, I already did this, I'm still breathing, let's get it. Yeah. So it's like, you know. Disregard the accomplishments, cause that shit. Right. You accomplish shit on the regular. Like certain things, are proud, like proud, you proud of. But as you get older, you feel like you feel how insignificant those things were. Yeah. So the proudest moment is you know just being healthy, healthy, being alive, being smart enough to make the right decisions. Mm -hmm. so it's kind of just like just proud of you know who you are. Uh, exactly. What's been your scariest? One? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm a, yeah. I've been at parties that we've been shot at. Like that's a scary really? moment. Yeah. Yo, when we go, when you're growing up out in Southern California, you gonna go to some house parties and don't get shot at. That's just how it is. You know what I mean? Like I've probably been at least ten growing up. So, so what's the scariest thing you feel know. by the tenth one? It's just another. It gets normal. It's just it's normal. crazy. Like by the eighth and ninth and tenth, like damn, they shot this one up. Again. It's the regular. What's the next party? Wow. Yeah. So I mean, it, but the first one is crazy. You know? So yeah, well, I want to know that experience. Bro, it was so long ago, but I'm sure. Like I remember, I remember jumping over fences, like losing shoes. I'm telling you, like it's, it's, you got to like, shake the spot. Like, that was in that was in uh, like almost my Inglewood. Yeah, jumped over a fence, like not no closer than me, probably a little closer than me, further than me and you. Fire breaks out, like, you know, shots going off and you just gone, you know what I mean? Like, praying. Look, honestly, my, my scariest moment is probably I was like 15 and I had two homies, bro, and was doing some hair right out of shit. These motherfuckers, it's crazy because I was new to it. I, I just moved to Lancaster. I get into this big ass apartment complex. You got like four pools, like four gyms. It's big as hell, my guy. And these motherfuckers I'm kicking it with, they like, hey, let's go throw some rocks on cars. And I'm like, all right, my dumb ass. So we go walk around the complex, go to the exit. These motherfuckers throwing rocks at cars. I start throwing rocks at cars. These motherfuckers hit one car specific. It was car. a cop? Nah, it was, uh, just, it was just like a little, like a black neon tinted windows. That's when I started learning about sketchy cars and like shit like that, like, you know? Cause it's like, bro, that car was sketchy to begin with. But this motherfucker hit the motherfucker car and that motherfucker Loki tried to like pull off after us, right? But it was already going the other direction. We had to hit a U-turn. We just cut back through the fucking complex. That motherfucker ended up pulling around there. As we walk into the little weenish thing to get food, this motherfucker pulls up on us, bro. And he's like, y'all hit my bitch's car. And he hopped out with his pistol, bro. And literally with his pistol like pulled out and shit, bro. I was like, oh, this nigga about to shoot us over these. I was so hot because I'm like, I didn't even throw the fucking rock. I'm like, I didn't even throw the fucking rock. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like I didn't even throw, I didn't even throw it. The nigga that threw it, my nigga was like, I apologize, I apologize. And he was already up in niggas' faces by then. But then he realized yeah. we was he realized we was all just kids and he was like, Oh man. Right. Y'all yeah. gotta come apologize to him. And he made us walk all the way from like Wiener Snitch to, to the complex to his apartment and apologize to his girlfriend. What's the biggest man, I, I wouldn't need some money for the for the for the shit. Hey, it didn't do no damage. He was just like uh, mad about it. Like nothing cracked, it was nothing uh, but I the nigga. On that. But the fact this nigga had the pistol drop, I was the first time I had a gun put on me. I was a kid, I was like, hold on, man, this nigga is tripping. I was like, yo, yeah, this could be a rap right now because this motherfucker threw a roster to stay at home. I got the gun put on me by cops when we was kids. We was walking down the MLK uh, parade. 
Oh man. <laughs> MLK parade, bro, and they pulled up on me and like two of my friends thought we were selling drugs out there. Get out of here. I promise you, we was like, we was probably 17, 16, but like, you know, we look like yeah. money. They like, what is these motherfuckers doing over yeah. here? Mm-hmm. Put us That's over, the, like, searched us everything, bro. I don't know. It was crazy. Yeah. All type of shit. Not really country music. <laughs> I don't listen to country, but if a good country song come on, I'm yeah. not. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna be like turn that shit off. I don't have like a country fan, but um, I pretty much opened to a lot of shit, bro. Yeah. I feel like we can't go through this session and not and not be, and not say you know at least R.I.P. Take off. Yeah, I'm, I'm not much of like oh, amigo sure. amigo fan, yeah. but R.I.P. to take off because I'm a fuck was an artist. Um, me neither, you know, but like nobody deserves to. to yeah, not like that. Yeah. You know, there's a different speculation talking about how you land, you know, there's different stuff on YouTube. Listen, life is life, and yeah. it should be appreciated, like yeah. you know, respected. So I said. Yeah, that was every day at lunch. Uh, that was, yeah, I was back in the days. I got out the system in like the playground. Like, <laughs> what, what, what's that like? What, what, what's that environment like? Personally, um, what environment? Like, what's, 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 what's like rolling that's like? Oh, bro, I don't. I, I was religious really dice in high school. For lunch, I would just play dice and roll dice. Yeah, and that wasn't wasn't like on the block in the hood. Yeah, I wasn't in the. Hood. I wasn't doing that shit in the hood. I mean, it is what it is. You got people drinking alcohol, liquor, till four in the morning with guns on them. And they, Money, shit's gonna happen. Yeah. Just, mm-hmm. so it's just what it is. It's a bad mix. It's like a setup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you said, yourself up. I mean, you might get out, you might not. <laughs> the biggest L I ever took was when I got my, uh, like, my first laptop got stolen. Like, you know? And not even stolen, it was, it was because, like, all right, so I had a backpack with my laptop over at this chick's, like, big ass fucking, she had a big ass, like, venue, bruh. And she had, she wanted us to like run that shit and throw like little parties. At first we was like repairing shit, building shit up or whatever. But she had got into it with one of my homies because it was like four of us that was helping her with the whole thing. And But she was growing weed and these niggas stole her weed plants. Mind you, I didn't know shit. I was literally out this fucking state at the time, like in fucking Minnesota or something, bro. But I come back, all my shit, my backpack's fucking going with my laptop. And she's like, Fuck all oh, y'all, y'all motherfuckers stole my weed. I was like, I wasn't even out here. And then she was like, oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. But by that time, it was like days after that. Like, I didn't even know about this shit till I had got back to the city. And I was like, yo, I had so much music. Like, so much, like, years, like, probably like six years worth of, like, yo. Like. Yeah, I'm gonna go first. The goal is just to continue on with uh, what we started here, opening a second location. Um, either in California or another state, um, and just keep moving forward. Progress each day. Hmm. Hear that? Like, other than just getting better with my music, she getting more unique, more creative with it. I actually have a homie who's a boxer, and I'm, I'm starting to be a promoter for it. So I'm trying to get into that area of like booking or get matchmaking or whatever you know you would call it. Get him a little sponsor, maybe like manage boxing management, sports, whatever you call that. Like. Sports management. Yeah, you know. So other than the music and the et cetera, I'm trying to dabble into that. What inspires you to, to to keep on that track? What's your inspiration? Just my passion and the passion of the people like around me, because it's like, like for example, the uh, the boxer I'm talking talking about, my boy Ray is like one of my closest friends. That motherfucker is like. Boxing is really his passion. You can tell that, like, as soon as you talk to him about that, that's all he does. Like, you know, he be smoking a blunt, trying to... Then he, he trains all damn day, get out the fucking gym, still... It's like, all right, bro, you know that's your shit. Like, I, how I feel about the beats, that's how you feel about that shit, so I can respect... Like, bro, this motherfucker design, damn it, all this shit up in here. Yeah, well, like, what you, yeah. that's, that's passion right there, bro. Yeah. So it's like shit like that. It's like, all right, for sure. Now, I'm not the only motherfucker that I feel some way about something. Like, you know, because a lot of motherfuckers don't feel no way about anything. They just do their, like, regular life shit. That's beautiful, though. Sort of, like, feeding off, you know, the inspiration. So what's it, what inspires you? Um, just to, just not having things accomplished that I wanted, that I want done. You know, always having new, new things that I still mm-hmm. haven't reached yet. And that, you know, keeps me from feeling yeah. accomplished. And without accomplishment, you don't finish. You know what I mean? So we got to... You reach the peak. Yeah, knocking things off the list that we want to get done so so we can finally get to that point where you know, now we need to start something different, do something different because we've accomplished what we need to. Uh, phone, keys, wallet.
we leave in the fucking Bob Marley's. I mean, so I can leave it out the phone. You, you ain't wrong, bro. Yeah, I can't hear that. <laughs> How long you been doing these interviews? Pardon? How long you been doing these interviews? Right, this is my, this is the second one. Okay. Flip the script. This is the second one. When the interview gets this interviewed. The second one. So, <laughs> like, I see you, I see you, I see you. But, I, especially like LA music, I feel like it's kind of like the same sound that's actually popping. But in comparison to what's going on in New York right now, it's like, like, you know, at first I felt like New York had it. Like, you know, and I don't know what the fuck going on right now, but I feel like LA pretty much took it. But at the end, even then, there's the motherfuckers from the South that's doing better than both. So it's like, you know, hey, man, that sh it could be better. It could be better. Let me just say that. It I don't could know, be some of music is like, it's all, it's all personal. Subjective. Subjective, you know what I mean? So I'm like, some stuff is good, some stuff ain't, but I feel like that's how it always was. We just were fed a, so, a, a, such a small number of songs that we had to like all of them. It was popping at a certain era. Now there's so much music out. Yeah, a lot of shit gonna be trash. It's a lot more yeah. out there. You know what I mean? It's a lot easier to get it out there. Find some better shit. same with anything. Clothes, if it's a hundred donut stores. Yeah. Be more of them that got trash donuts. <laughs> oh, because there's a formula to win. So yeah. everybody follows that formula to try to get to it. You know what I mean? There's a yeah. certain style, sound, look, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And people that aren't on that alignment don't get the same. Don't get the shine. Don't get, they don't get as much of it. Or even yeah. if they do, their music will be liked by like a certain few that's not ready to accept outside of what the ideal artist is. Be like. It could be better, and more, to bounce off what what Corey just said, it's like like what Ye was saying, bro. Like what Ye was saying about the motherfuckers controlling the media and only feeding motherfuckers a certain thing and making their money off of that. Like, yeah. rap has a big part to do with it. Like, <laughs> like right now, if, if, if a Kanye West um, college dropout rapper came out, he would have no chance. Really. We have no chance. Cause his motherfuckers like that. <laughs> I don't know if it's like that, but I, but we don't know because he's not gonna get the attention because he don't fit the bill. So you, you know think? I, I, so I, I still listen to Wayne. You know, so I still listen to Biggie, J. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So whatever the youth is doing, they're doing it because that's how they feel at the time. Just like how when we were. So for KRS-One, the new incarnation of KRS-One, yeah. he would have his coat. He would have his coat all over. But right. he wouldn't be. Because at that time, that's the music people were listening to. You feel me? Like at that Kanye era, Pharrell had been changing music already a little bit than Kanye. Mm -hmm. Everybody was more open. You know, people was a little more open to it. You know what I mean? Like now, when when complete complete like kids basically operate how music sounds, it's it's gonna go to whatever direction they want it to, and they're gonna be happy with it. But that's fine. Like. Let the kids' music should be the kids' music. Yeah, yeah. So, how long have you lived in LA? Uh, like 10. My whole life, yeah, I started, I started here. Oh yeah, so, I mean, I was I was a kid coming to Santa Monica to see my, my family, but I, I was living in, in, in like, Riverside. Big evolved. Yeah, my. How Yeah, other than the fact that like COVID made a lot of people like leave LA Slow and down yeah, cut down a lot of events. Everything that was like yeah. popping, like all the reason people was really coming out here. So wait, you're telling me that COVID is usually more packed than it is. Like the, like before COVID, yeah, for sure. Downtown was crazy. Like it was a lot more people that lived down here. Mm -hmm. It was a lot more like youth down here. Uh, more travel. People travel more into downtown now. You know the news and everything. People. They're staying away from downtown, man. Like what? So how was how has this block changed since in the past six years? Uh, yeah, well, I wasn't really on this block. Yeah, but let's say like on like. Like Seventh like Street, bro. Change because my school moves right here. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, like, yeah, was no young like people really coming over here. Was it, was it more quiet? Was it? Was it? Was it more nah, it's downtown. It's always been a little noise. Place like this. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
The only difference is, like I said, it's not as many tourists in downtown as it used to be. People just come down here on vacations. They not vacation in Dallas. Yeah, definitely. It's mostly because of COVID, huh? COVID in the streets, like you know, it's crazy in the streets. My face is getting robbed and shot and all type of etc. Yo, what's what's up with that? That's always been. Yeah, that's the regular. On the TV now, it's scaring people. That's not like we've always known. We've always known LA to be what it is. Now you know the only difference is they kind of taking it up to Hollywood and shit a little more. Mm hmm. But like somebody's gonna get caught for them. Look. When the whole country goes into a recession and people are hungry for stuff, that's that's the type of thing that happened, unfortunately. How did COVID affect COVID? I shut down my store. I had to shut down my store for like six months. What was that? It was it was it was difficult, but I mean, I had no I had no choice, I had no option. So it was a lot of time at home planning, you know, spending time. Uh, trying to figure out when we was gonna get back to business, uh, learning, reading, just getting shit done.